that I find that there's a huge opportunity it's such a low-hanging fruit for companies nowadays is most companies are not doing a lot of especially java apps are not doing metrics like people are doing logging but there's this huge low-hanging fruit of metrics and i did want to kind of demonstrate today how easy it is to sh to use with spring boot micrometer and with some kind of uh metric solution and um a little bit about me so i work at pivotal right now as a platform architect helping companies with pcf with agile Etc. Before I worked uh, at ThoughtWorks for five years, also doing a, like drinking the Agile bandwagon and uh, all that. And I've worked also at, on Java applications with high volume traffic where we knew even if, if things were off by, if, if sales were off by just 2% in, in the last five minutes, we would know about it and we'd know like, okay, we got to correct things. Um, so the question that I want to ask you guys is like, do you know how your apps are doing? Like you deploy apps, but do you actually know, like, are you getting traffic to them? Um, when you deploy a new release, has it improved things? Has it improved performance? Has it improved throughput? What are the usage patterns? I've seen people deploy apps, spend a lot of time on them and not realize that it's actually like no one's using them. Like they, they get no volume, especially in corporate where you're deploying these apps and like when you really look at it, nobody's using your app. Like, do you know this stuff? Uh, like, do you know, do you have like real time information on performance and trends? If a random exception or error happens, do you know about it right away? Um, do you have some kind of immediate reporting on like, or even on thresholds? Like, okay, maybe you've set things up to like warn you when the server goes down, but what if you've deployed something and now your app's just working at half the speed with half the throughput, like, do you know this stuff? And I'm gonna take a wild guess that for a lot of you guys, it's a no, because that's kind of what I see, right? That, okay, so so that that's kind of what I want to show you guys, like how it's actually pretty, it's a lot easier than people think. Um, I mean, so what do we do now, right? Like. When it comes to application monitoring, it's uh, I find there's a huge overlap. There's a lot of things you could do, right? There's logging. Is everyone here using some kind of centralized logging? Because I still see, I still go to client sites, and whenever there's an issue, it's all right, right. Like let's SSH into ten different machines and grep through all these log files. Like even if they're lucky and there's log files, uh, but like show of hands, everyone here is using centralized logging of some sort, right? We're, uh, is anyone not using centralized logging? So some kind of like Splunk solution, Sumo solution. I, I, want, I want to know like how advanced I could take this or if like I got to start from the bottom. Okay, everyone's using centralized logging, great. Uh, analytics, uh, especially when you get into web applications, you can use solutions like Google Analytics, uh, Omniture, kind of give you information on user data flows, your sales funnels, who's using what, great solutions, uh, tracing, there's some great tracing um, tracing code out there with uh, Spring Cloud Sleuth and Zipkin, or maybe you could correlate uh, different microservices, uh, maybe even reporting, you could kind of try to figure out how your app's behaving based on database information and getting reports out of that. But today I'm going to be talking about metrics, and then what I really mean about this and like our why metrics over, over logging, because I, I, I think a lot of people, like what I see is a lot of people aren't using metrics. So they're using logging or sometimes they're using logging. Like they take a really powerful solution like Splunk, which you could kind of, like has anyone here used Splunk? So you can kind of do metrics with it. If you set up the correct key, key value pairs, you could start getting, doing analysis but it's still logging. And I wanted to differentiate it in, in terms of how it scales. Logging scales uh, linearly. So if you have like, if you add, if you have 10 times as much throughput, 100 times as much throughput, that's gonna be 100 times, much, 100 times as much logging. And maybe developers won't see it locally, but it quickly adds up. And I've been to many 
companies where a single app can have a throughput of about like 60 gigabytes of logging every day, uh, which adds up. And that's, if you're doing it, um, if you're paying for software as a service solution, I mean, that's going to be expensive, 65 gigs a day. And if you're doing it yourself, like using a solution like Splunk, you're probably going to need a full-time Splunk uh, maintainer. And Splunk, uh, as much as I, I think Splunk is a good solution, like it's expensive. It's six figures. Um, so this is where metrics is different. Is it's, is it's, it doesn't scale lin linearly. It kind of scales uh, almost flat. Like, uh, pardon me? Not logarithmically. Um, it's almost constantly, almost. It's kind of like what uh, like a hash lookup is. Like it's it's almost constant. That's what I would call it. I, I think that I was trying to figure out the right word for it because I know logging is linear, and but metrics is almost constant. And then, and it's not just for the cost. It's also for performance. Like if you're doing Splunk on 10 gigs of data and you want to do metrics. Uh, I've spent a lot of time waiting for my Splunk queries to finish. Metrics, well, I mean, when you're talking about like smaller, like much, much, much smaller amounts of data, it's fast and it's a lot better for developers and you could uh, do things differently. But it is because of this and the way things work kind of behind the scenes of why it scales linearly, it doesn't scale linearly, it's numerical or data only, which I kind of, I'll give you guys some examples. And I kind of my observation is um, right now, I would kind of, I kind of have this opinion that there's a lot of like vendor lock-in where you typically, what I see is people just pick one solution and hard, car, hard code for that solution. Like whether or not it's like, I don't know, custom new relic code or custom Dynatrace code or something, it's always hard coded so you can't really change around as easily. Uh, and this is where I wanted to talk, uh, this is what I wanted to talk about today, is this great tool called uh, Micrometer. Has anyone here heard of Micrometer? Great. Has anyone not heard of Micrometer? Okay. Uh, so I, I, took the, I took the word off, uh, this is the definition off of, uh, off of a site, a vendor neutral application metrics facade. The easiest example that I would give, uh, the, the analogy that I use, it's, it's a log for J for metrics. So it's, it doesn't act, you still need an actual metrics monitoring solution, but you, you code it once, uh, it gives you a lot of stuff out of the box, and then whether or not it's New Relic or Dynatrace or Datadog, you just point at whatever system you want and it's done. And uh, it's integrated in Spring Boot, specifically Spring Boot 2.0. So if you're on 1X, it's not there. Uh, there's a different solution. Uh, but with 2.0, if you use the actuator dependency, which I'll do, a, uh, sorry, if you include the actuator dependency, you get this out of the box, including a whole bunch of metrics. Oh yeah, so you get out of the box, uh, a little bit unlike logging with, uh, with metrics, there's, there's some out of the box metrics. So if you just, if, if all you do is include this dependency, you'll get, uh, a whole bunch of uh, JVM related metrics, uh, JDBC related metrics, cache metrics, um, even things like uh, Spring Web. Uh, automatically, if you're hooked into a monitoring system, you could see which, uh, which endpoints are getting hit, uh, how many times, request rates, what's failing, without even coding, just adding this dependency. If you, as long as you point in some monitoring solution, you'll get all this data. Um, and what I want to dive into a little bit is this custom metrics, because I do find when companies, if companies are a little bit more advanced and they do have metrics, maybe like some kind of new relic solution, great. Um, maybe you could see what's going on in the JVM, you could see memory allocation. But I find very few people actually take advantage of like this custom metrics ability, where it's, you can add your own metrics, maybe even like some kind of business value related of, look, I want to track, I want to have real time information of how many sales are going through my app and be able to warn me if things dip too much. So that's what I was going to talk about today. And it is um, bring your own monitoring solution. So you still need a monitoring solution, which I'll kind of go over. 
uh, supported monitoring solutions. Um, there's a whole bunch. I don't know, you may have heard of some of them. Uh, I think of the kind of the common ones, Datadog, Time to Trace, New Relic, uh, even JMX. Uh, you could connect things up into JMX. I want to talk about two today because I know there's some PCF people in the crowd. Uh, PCF Metrics and Humio. I'm actually not affiliated with Humo in any way, but uh, I've actually found it uh, when I was throwing together this demo, I was like, wow, this is one of the best, easiest to use software as a service solutions. Um, my recommendation is if you're a small to medium business, don't try to do it yourself. It's just easier if you could do it uh, like some kind of software as a service solution. Uh, so there's some great uh, tools out there. Um, I've been using Humio for my own stuff. Setting up your own metrics is something like Prometheus. Prometheus is the popular one. It's still a lot of work to set up. So I mean, if you're a small to medium company, like if you go pure software as a service, I don't know, whatever, 30 bucks a month or something, it just does everything for you. It'll save you a lot of work. Um, and then if you want to do it yourself, kind of the popular one is uh, Prometheus. And then for, because uh, I know there's some RVC and Scotiabank people here. Is anyone else here using PCF, Pivotal Cloud Foundry? No? Uh, for PCF, I would say enable uh, PCF metrics, which gives you monitoring. And um, I know one of you guys have it, and the other bank doesn't. Uh, so demo time. Um, I wanted to, and I also wanted to like leave this open because I have plenty of time today. Feel free to jump in with questions. Um, and yeah, so demo. Uh, is everyone here familiar with Spring Initializer? It's a great way to like kick off Spring Spring Boot apps. Um, so uh, Spring Boot Initializer. All I, all I did, so I started a project from scratch, uh, a Java one, great website just to kick off Spring Boot apps. Actually, in, whether it's Colon or Groovy, I'm really happy that there's no Scala option in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, all I added was that I, I started a project from scratch. All I added is the web and the actuator dependencies. Um, the actuator. Just to give you guys a quick overview, it's a great dependency. I just added it to all my Spring Boot apps, where it gives you a set of uh, endpoints, uh, an info endpoint, uh, a refresh endpoint, um, a health endpoint, a whole bunch of useful endpoints to interact with your app. Uh, they just give you a lot of useful stuff out of the box. And one of them is actually a metrics endpoint, where you can, even if you don't have the metric solution, you could hit this metrics endpoint and see what the values are. And there's also a log file endpoint too or if you, for whatever reason, you don't have centralized logging, uh, you can just hit that endpoint, and that's pretty useful. So I started this app from scratch, web and actuator. Um, I didn't do anything. I just I implemented a couple of empty methods and some calculation stuff, um, and added some um, some some rest. Sorry, some endpoints. That's it. Uh, so I want to start like going through kind of typical scenarios that maybe I'd want to start counting for my custom uh, metrics. So I mean, the first one, like maybe I want to get visibility into something like, hey, how many how many files am I transferring over? Um, and just like uh, logging um, metrics, you could do with with micrometer. You could kind of one line it as well. So there's just a metrics uh, static uh, counter. You always have to give it a counter name. Uh, so I don't know, files transferred, increment. Uh, and then in the case of the counter, in which I'll describe what the counter is, transferred, increment. So I'm going to, every time this method gets called, I know I'm going to record how many. Uh, how many files got transferred uh, randomly? 
Um, micrometer has a couple of different uh, count. Sorry, it's not counters. It's uh, meters. So they call it meters. Um, so if you go into metrics, um, metrics. Sorry. And the documentation actually is also really good. They list out all of them, but I'm going to go over five today. Timer, gauge, summary, counter, and a couple of other ones. They all have different use cases, and I'm going to do a quick overview. But for counters, it's just some kind of positive number that you're counting up and down. So how much are you doing of X? I typically wouldn't use it for like, I'll use something else for um, less of a counter, but maybe something like a dollar value. Uh, Etc. But for just reg anything that I would count and it's positive, counter is the easiest one, and counter is kind of the the default one that people use. Um, so I'm gonna. Pardon me. Yep. Question. Uh, I think Drop Wizard has its own metric solution, right? What's their? What's their? Uh, what are they used? They're just like completely. Oh, why does my code not compile? Uh, so just adding that one line and uh, creating a project from scratch. Uh, what can I get? So. Local host. What was, uh, what was my endpoint called? Uh, transfer file. Uh, so I've hit it, I don't know, a couple times. Um, and now I want to show you guys number one. Um, actuator. So for anyone that hasn't seen Actuator, um, these are kind of the out of the box endpoints that you get with this Actuator Spring Boot dependency. Uh, health, beans, cash, uh, conditions, environment, uh, settings, etc. But you also get this, uh, this metrics stuff. Um, so now I could start drilling into metrics. And these are actually, if you notice, even though we only added one metric, uh, it actually is keeping track of all these other ones as well. So out of the box, I don't know, uh, memory used, uh, log back events. Uh, and then it also has my uh, log files transferred. Um, is this metric endpoint secured by default? I, it's secure by default. I added a line just uh, enabling, adding no, turning off all security. So that makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, only, only the info and the health, and I think there's another one, or uh, not secure by default. I added a line. Uh, restart is uh, <laughs> there's a there's a restart one as well. Yeah, um, but <laughs> but I could also now go. I think it's files transferred. Uh, so I actually I could also drill into my um, my metrics. So I could see that oh, 53 files got transferred. Um, I wouldn't typically. This is only, for, I would only use this for testing purposes. Uh, I would still hook this into some kind of valid solution. Um, but you could see that, oh yeah, my metrics are getting populated. Uh, another one, um, this gauge concept. So ga a gauge is typically something you sample. You don't want to count. It's like, I just want to know, typically anytime there's a level. So it's like, hey, what's the memory at? And it's just sampled. So if it, I know your memory could be, uh, memory usage could be two gigs and then one gig and then 500 megabytes. But the system is just sampling at set amount of times instead of trying to do any fancy averages. Um, so anytime there's a level of some kind of bounds, uh, that's typically when you would use a ga a gauge, something like a water level or memory level or I know um, CPU usage. Yeah. Um, so that's 
where you use this gauge concept. Uh, gauge, um, let's do, let's call it uh, water level. And if you notice, I actually didn't create an endpoint for this. Um, It's, uh, I forget the syntax. I had it uh, written down. One second. Um, oh yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, okay. This metrics. Yeah. Um, do you notice things are a little bit different here? I. only call this once. So I use the post construct annotation. So I call this once and it's just saying like a hey, micrometer sample this on your at your own discretion, but every time you need to sample, uh, call on call this method on this object. Uh, so it's it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. I think there's ways to tweak it. I haven't had to. I believe it's some kind of default value of, I don't know, five seconds. The documentation is really good. I highly recommend if you guys are interested, go to micrometer.io. Uh, they go through all the concepts. Uh, like even the stuff that I'm going to present today, this is just 101. There's like there's some like pretty advanced uh, optimizations and et cetera that you could do. Um, so that's pretty easy. I mean, if we hit the endpoint, actually no, now if we restart the app, um, it'll just start sampling every X amount of time. Uh, one last one, so timing. Maybe I wanna like track how much something is taking. So this is where you would use um, timer. So I don't know, just random. Which one? This one? Yeah. In this particular case, it won't. But if, you are, if I do it in other places, this will create a reference to whatever object you are trying to mine. Uh, so the question is would this create a memory leak? I don't think it would. Would it? Is it am I missing something? Yeah, yeah, you do want monitoring. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but you're not gonna you're not gonna call this for like something that it's created as part of a request. That's right. Yes, right? I wouldn't. Yep. So you, it might be a specific string, but you're right. You wouldn't pass an instance of something that's long lived. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look. So I'm gonna l restart the app. So this is good because the I find uh, taking. So the question is, so. Um, Oh, can I do something similar for uh... oh, okay can I one time set a counter can I one time set it to have it monitor or something I've never done it, done it that way maybe I don't know but uh, I typically make it explicit like like a log message where every time I need to log something I'll just like this is the X maybe uh, there might be a way but yeah, it sounds like you're asking, can I do a counter the same way I do a gauge, where I just set it once? Uh, 
specific circumstance where I know I want this. I want that age to be sampled at this point in time. For example, let's say that the subject knows that I have the main support for the other and it's not that they feel really uncomfortable and I want to set it explicitly. So can I do this? Uh, yes, there, there seems to be a whole bunch of different methods. Uh, I don't know what this T number is, but uh, there might be. There's a lot of overrides. Um, I'd look into it. I just I find typically my use cases that I've seen with clients is it's typically one method. So I just I set it once and, and repeat. But maybe there's a use case for what you want. And I'd look into one of these other um, overloaded methods. Yep. Yeah, so maybe, pardon me? Sure, so for some, I would want as an app to know when, uh, like, I, I find the more advanced metrics usages get into a little bit business value level where it's, like, I, as I don't know, if I had some kind of app monitoring um, water level, I'd want to know if it's too high and, like, let me warn. Even if it's not app-centric, I'd create a dashboard Here's the water level. Make it go red if it's 80. Send me a Slack webhook if it's 100. Um, something like that. A number of concurrent. Uh, that's is that a gauge metric? Yeah. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I guess, yeah, if you, uh, this gives the, it's sampling. Yeah, so you lose data. Like, uh, unlike counter, if there's stuff that goes on between the sampling periods, you lose it. It's not logged at all. Whereas with the, with the, all the other systems, everything gets logged. Um, but it's a good question. Uh, so, I mean, another one. Uh, metrics, so I want to time a method. Hey, just keep track of how long this method is taking. Uh, there's a separate, um, there's a separate, actually I already wrote it. <laughs> uh, there's a separate meter called um, timer, and I believe it's record. So that's it. I pass in a method, runnable or something, a function, uh, and that's it. Oopsie. And now, random delay. If I hit my I hit my endpoint a couple of times. I should be able to eventually see uh, actuator. Uh, random delay. Yep, random delay. Delay has been ingested at least once. And it gives me um, a whole bunch of information on that. Pardon me? Yeah, so. Yeah, so just going back to the code, uh, so I have an endpoint random delay, and random delay method is I just um, created a random delay from 50 to 250 milliseconds. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there's a way that I could. Yeah. 
Um, so that's three, but now I want to get to the point of, okay, so you know, it's great we have this endpoint metrics, but uh, what do we, I actually want to send it somewhere useful instead of just having to check this stuff. So in my case, I want to send it to Humio, and Humio is just a software as a service solution for metrics. I'll do a quick demo, now affiliated. Um, you have to add a dependency for the monitoring tool that you're exporting to. So whether it's Prometheus, uh, Atlas, et cetera, you just have to add a dependency and it'll auto configure with sensible defaults like uh, most of Spring Boot. So I'm gonna add my uh, Humio dependency. I did, in the application properties, I added one line it's my uh, Cumio ingest token. I'm not going to open it up because then uh, everyone's going to start uh, spamming it. But I, I did want to say that the only thing I had to add for Cumio to work was this dependency. And then in Cumio, in the application properties, I added this Cumio API token. And that's it. Uh, so right now, if I restart, um, I'll be able to see my data in Humio. Uh, so give you guys a quick, actually one second. Uh, refresh. Uh, this is from earlier today. It should start showing up there pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if I'm getting a delay. But basically what I will get uh, is just all this data being streamed to the software as a service solution. Um, this took me like five minutes to set up. Uh, what I like about Humio is that it's just the, the trial is unlimited. I find all the other ones because I was trying to find a one to demo. And they all have like 15 days trial, like New Relic, Dynatrace. Uh, this one has unlimited, which is kind of useful. Did I not put, oh yeah, there you go. So my data is starting to show up now, uh, 722. It's being ingested and it's using up a lot less information than data. And then everything else, like, I mean, process start time, heap time, uh, what else do I have in here? All the stuff is getting into my metric solution. Uh, and then, Uh, yep, so that's, so this is what I mean by like sampling, like it just takes the value at that time. Whereas if something different, like uh, what did we have? Uh, what were the other ones? Um, uh, I don't know if I was transferred. Did I misspell it? Or I guess it hasn't really sent through yet. Actually, yeah, okay, it has from uh, earlier today. Uh, it's it's counting, so it's just the, the data gets in a little bit differently. Uh, okay, so there's two more meters that I wanted to show. Um, there's one more called uh, distribution summary. Um, I'll show you what it outputs. It's typically used for um, less counting but more like values of some sort so like number of megabytes transferred uh number of purchase amounts and it'll give you a little bit more um like max min some additional information that gets processed so pardon me yeah uh yeah i'll, I'll show it yep summary um purchase Heard. So I, I just want to record. I want to see. Let's do this. 
I want to see how my app is performing. Let's see. Pardon me? What did I miss here? Oh, purchase name. Oops, I got the wrong one. Purchase amount. Uh, so every time this method gets called, I just want to track how much money is going through. And that's, that's usually a great metric. Like how much money at the end of the day, like if you have some kind of more business facing app, like I want to know how much app my app is making money. Like I want to see if things just tank because I do a deploy and be able to react to it. Like typically around like deployment time, I want to see if things tank or go up or if things are improving. Uh, so this gives me, so now I could track, look, how much money is my app making? And there's actually one other thing that I wanted to demo. Um, Prometheus calls these tags or multi-dimensional metrics. I may want to like start drilling into, like with metrics, I could create different fields to drill into. So I may want to track purchases by product name. So I could create, I could add tags to my metrics. So for example, metrics, uh, summary, um, purchase details. I give it a tag name, so product uh, name. Um, get So what this is doing is, pardon me? Let's, uh, let me just, uh, so I'm tracking it by product name and in my metric solution, I could either have them aggregated or I could drill into them and I could keep adding different, different tags as well. So I'm gonna run both of them, and here in this example, I kind of did something different. Is I just made this a scheduled task every, every uh, I think it's every two seconds, and I'm going to redeploy. Oh, sorry, rerun, and I should be able to see things start showing up in Humio pretty soon. And I did actually sorry the other example because I know there's some uh, pivotal people here. Um, if you're on services, if you're on PCF, I know one of you guys has PCF metrics installed. Actually, one second. Let me just... It's very similar to Humio in the sense of it's a. Uh, um, Just out of the box, like once you have it enabled from a developer point of view, it's pretty easy to get get up and uh, going. I did want to comment that what I do typically see, so I, I started tracking, I renamed this, I used, I used to call this uh, purchase max, um, purchase details, purchase max before when I was running it. But I will say that from my experience with metrics, what you'll typically find once you start tracking metrics like this, like purchase amounts, you'll start seeing that there's trends and patterns in your usage. So uh, I know with one company that I worked at, it was pretty clear that most of the business, like it was a sales company, most of the sales were being done weekdays from 6 p.m. to 12. And then you could even like preemptively start scheduling up and down. But you would typically see usage patterns like this with some kind of patterns. Once you start getting to higher volumes, there's almost always a trend, which is really useful to see with a metric solution such as this. Yeah, like it's, there, there's an overlap. There's an overlap, absolutely. Like I would still use, I think Omniture and Google Analytics are great tools. I wouldn't substitute, but I do find uh, that from like a developer point of view, like I still want to know if my app is performing really, really badly and business metrics are usually the best indication. Yeah, I usually find like a different team will manage Google Analytics and they won't give the developers access. Uh, it's a lot more advanced. Like it, it'll give you better breakdowns of the sales funnel and like 
click through and whatnot. Uh, but I do find like getting into like more business metrics, like getting closer to like, is my app making money? Or, or it doesn't even have to be about making money. Like are people using my app? Or are people using my app less than uh, after this deploy? Yeah. So it's not a replacement. It'd be kind of higher level, yeah. Uh, so it is there. Um, okay, so we have all this data. Um, actually, I'm curious of purchase details. Purchase. Okay, so we also have our purchase details. So this is great. I mean, I could query things. If there's problems, I can see what's happening. But the next thing that I'd recommend is like doing a couple of things. So a um, looking into setting up like dashboards. So having some kind of like live information of just the information that you think is important and stuffing it on a dashboard. Uh, so I mean, in I think I created a dashboard. So I created a dashboard for like it just show me the number of purchases in the last 24 hours. Um, a lot of these, like Prometheus and Humio, they have slightly different languages, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, but you've, you've, you create a query. Um, I'll give you some demos, actually. Let's do um, all these tools, like these, especially these software as a service tools, make it really easy to um, create dashboards. So, one second. except they all have different languages for querying, which I'm always, uh, uh, so maybe I want to track, let's see. Maybe I want to track, give me a pie chart of all the different See. Give me a pie chart of all the different uh, purchases by distribution. It actually came out a little bit. Uh, I think I had five different different values. Um, okay, here it's pretty even, <laughs> so it looks it looks like it wasn't working. But they are the numbers are slightly different. Uh, so lots of lots of boats and houses and goats and cars and dogs purchased. Uh, I would stick that into a dashboard. Um, and make it accessible. One second. I would stick that into a dashboard. And actually, what I like about Humio is it actually get, makes it really easy to do um, wall monitors and shared URLs. So I could click on this link and it'll give me a, a shareable URL. Then I could then auto default on a Raspberry Pi, like stick it on a monitor somewhere. And then everyone would see that, hey, uh, the application is doing well, and you could actually you could start getting advanced too. There's a lot of uh, customizability where I could say, "Hey, make this yellow if it if it's a certain value. Make it red if it's a certain value. Make it something else if it's a certain value." Um, you could also do alerts. Uh, has, does everyone here know Slack Slack webhooks? Does anyone here not know Slack webhooks? Okay, good. Uh, super useful. Uh, I've included on the GitHub repo. Okay, does anyone here not know Slack? Don't be. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Um, so it's a really easy feature to set up in Slack where you could create these URLs and you send data into them and then you could send messages into any channel or to yourself as well. It doesn't just have to be used for applications. It could be used for CI, for Jenkins. Hey, maybe I want to let my developers know automatically via Slack that a new application was deployed. I don't know, in Jenkins, I would just add a, an event. Like every time things get deployed, send a message into my uh, Slack team channel saying version X was deployed into pod. So even outside of this, there's a lot of useful stuff. But with uh, PCF metrics, Sorry, with um, uh, PCF metrics and Humio, you could set up, you give it your Slack webhook, you create it, I've included the steps, and then you can tell it to do something. Um, 
send me a Slack webhook every time something bad happens. Uh, so in my case, I created, these are one of the metrics kind of built in out of the box, uh, HTTP server requests. So out of the box, every single HTTP request gets logged and I could track it down by URL, but I could also track it by status. So I set up for myself a Slack webhook, like every time something bad happens, a 500, just let me know right away. Um, as opposed to what's very frequent is people start noticing a, like clients start noticing that the app isn't working and then slowly gets escalated and then you get like support on the phone and then support starts calling developers and it's two o'clock in the morning, like I would say cut that all out and just let the, your developers know right away if there's something bad, like a 500. Uh, so that's what I set up. Uh, what else is there? Um, so dashboards, alerts, uh, all that data is there. Oops. I think that's it for most of the code. That's a good question. So the question is if I have multiple instances. By default, you won't be able to tell, but you can add um, tags to differentiate. You could add common tags. So you could actually add a tag that says this is instance one, or this is IP two, or this is environment X to help you differentiate. So maybe if you, you could aggregate all your data and then just say like, hey, I wanna know uh, which instance these exceptions are happening on and query by that. Yes, there's a way called, uh, it's called common tags. So like outside of, so outside of creating these metrics, like one time, I would say, look, for all metrics, all of them, uh, add a tag called uh, application instance or I know application environment and just set that on everything. And then, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's a very good question because then you may want to, I know, for whatever reason, maybe your developers are doing dev pre-prod and prod together. Maybe you have two different load balanced environments and you want to know which one it came from. Uh, then I would look into this feature called uh, common tags. For some reason, I want to unit test that timer method, and I don't have an actual metrics implementation. It will work. It will work with. What do you mean with that? Because even if you noticed, um, even before I added the uh, the Humio dependency, it was still working, but it just wasn't like it was just storing in memory. static method, like okay. if I have a metric call in a method that I want to unit test, yeah. am I going to have to do something special to like mark it out or is it just going to do nothing? I think it's going to do something that's going to do that. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, yeah. yeah, I would say don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Um, what else do I have? Okay. Uh, so that's it for a couple of um, couple of tips from kind of my observations from what I've seen with logging and with observability te telemetry is uh, you're probably logging too much uh, and logging doesn't scale well. Um, I've seen like specifically. Um, Oh, uh, low t I mean, this is the one I saw recently a couple of weeks ago where uh, a team was doing, like at an enterprise level with a lot of, a large enterprise, which so in Toronto that shall remain anonymous. Um, one team decided to do very thorough uh, load testing and it completely overloaded their, uh, their logging solution and everyone else because they just spammed gigabyte like I know hundreds of gigabytes of logging information 
a day, and it took everything down. Um, pardon me? But it was, uh, but I mean, it wasn't even realistic. Like they weren't, they wanted to see how much, oh, they, they just wanted to see how much they could, uh, how fast they could go, yeah. And they were never like realistically ever going to get any close. Um, something like that, yeah. Performance, yeah, with micrometer, the the default, the custom. Okay, so. Yes, absolutely. So Spring Boot, if I have a Spring Boot app, um, two point or or higher, uh, I add the actuator dependency. Uh, I point it to a metric solution, so Prometheus. Um, uh, sorry, Prometheus, I don't know, Atlas, Datadog. Without any code changes, you'll get a whole bunch of uh, metrics. One of them would be uh, by endpoint, how many times is it being called, what errors is it getting, uh, the latency. It, also, it actually also does um, my calls out. So it also automatically starts monitoring any REST template or web client usage. Uh, it also uh, monitors, I think, JDBC usage calls, cache usage. Um, what else? There's one other one. A lot of them. Uh, oh, and, and all the reactive stuff, like WebFlux and whatnot. So a lot of that. Like no code. You just need to point it to something. Uh, a lot of useful data. Yeah, all the JVM stats, too. Um, so yeah, look into uh, supplementing with logging. Especially if you go with the software as a service solution, it's pretty easy. Uh, it scales much, 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 much better. Um, I would definitely look into like immediate alerting on critical issues. Like that's why I like Slack webhooks. Even if you okay, if, even if you don't have a metric solution, I would look at setting up something for logging, or like okay, let me know if there's like unknown critical errors, and let my team know about it right away. And even if you even if you don't have uh, centralized logging, you could always do it at the application level. So in your logback.xml, just add a, a Slack appender and configure it to like every time there's an exception, like message my team so I know them so they know about it right away, as opposed to like this broken window fallacy of like these errors just start accumulating and then at one point when somebody looks into log files and they see like Oh, there's, there's hundreds of different exceptions, and oh, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, it happens all the time. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of um, like dashboards, uh, whether or not it's like shared team dashboards. You do have to be, just like with metrics and with logging, um, clean up the noise. I find a lot of people just keep adding stuff, and especially especially with logging, people for whatever reason I see this pattern that people think that like logging is free and like I need to log everything. Where I see like every single method is there's a log message saying entering method, exiting method, entering method, exiting method. Like um, I would not advocate for that. And I remember I was talking to actually the developer of uh, Micrometer who used to work at Netflix, and he was saying how uh, Netflix they actually only use logging for uh, exceptions. Everything else is metrics, as opposed to what you typically see where, like, let's log everything. Um, yep, so that's it. And I'll, uh, the link to the source code is going to be available. Thanks, guys.